measuring the masses on this particular model boat, we used four quarters on each half of the boat and made sure that they were at equal distances. This is one of the models of our boats and it is shaped in a long rowboat design. With the greater dimensions of the length, the width, and the height, there will be more volume, allowing the displaced water volume to increase. We want the force of the water on the boat to be greater than the force of the gravity on the boat. The object will float if it weighs less than the amount of water that is displaced, which is why we need to displace more water. Sides of the boat will be longer and at a smaller angle to the water to decrease the water resistance and allow the boat to move faster. Since the force of the water spreads over a larger area, the pressure will be less. The bottom of the boat will be completely a flat surface in order for there to be more stability because the water pressure on the surface will be even. On the actual design, we want there to be sharper angles on the side to minimize the surface area. We will fold the sides of the boat and use limited tape on the edges to prevent holes and gaps where water can easily permeate through. The people inside of the boat will sit in a position with their knees up so they can be closer to their center of mass and increase stability. Hello and good morning, evening, or whatever time it is when you're watching this. This is one of our model boats. It has a standard rowboat shape. It is six by three inches and the sides are two inches tall. The bow has an angle of 60 degrees and the stern is completely flat as well as the hull. This boat can support a relatively large amount of weight considering its size. However, after a minute or so of floating with weight, it begins to fill up with water, which is what's happening right now. This is due to the duct tape we use not being entirely waterproof. We intend to wrap the entire base of the boat in a black plastic garbage bag and then cover that with duct tape. We may use empty rolls on the base of the boat to increase its buoyancy. Both paddlers are going to be paddling in sync. They are going to need to keep the same rhythm and hopefully it's going to be at a fast pace. The one in front will be paddling to the right and the one in the back will be paddling to the left. The blade of the paddle, in this case the kickboard, will be parallel with the boat and must remain parallel with the boat in order to prevent the boat from rotating in a circle. The two paddlers need to push with the same amount of force to ensure that the boat will move in a straight line and not travel to the side. It's important that they travel straight from one side of the pool to the other because it will take less time than traveling in a curved or even a slanted line. When the paddlers reach the end of the pool, they are going to line the blade of the kickboard up with the side of the boat. Then they will draw in the kickboards to the boat, making the long side of the kickboard parallel to the boat instead of the blade. They may need to repeat this motion several times, but this should successfully turn the boat around and our boat will be able to complete the race. We are choosing to go with this model instead of a canoe because it can hold more weight. This model is in a canoe shape, however, instead of the bottom as a square, this one has an oval bottom. This design was modeled after the classic keelboat, which is the world's most widely used boat design because of its strength and virtual inability to flip. This model measures in at one twelfth the scale of the actual mo or actual boat, um, which measures in at roughly two meters long by 1.5 meters wide. Um, this design can even hold a large amount of weight relative to its own size. So let's test it. And as you can see, it still stays afloat and it can turn rather easily in a small radius.